again like for all those who are on the call right now um a very good evening to one and all uh, today we are going to deal with the identification of warblers part 1 and uh, my name is balaji uh, from coimbatore nature society i am also part of uh, salimali naturalist forum and i've done a course in ornithology from bombay natural history society and uh, um, i'm also an e bird reviewer for uh, coimbatore district so let's get started with today's presentation so um the way that we're going to do uh, deal with our today's presentation is uh, we're going to look at the warblers found in our region uh, we're going to see how to identify the warblers we're going to summarize uh, the various identification pointers and then we'll have like uh, an identification quiz for all the participants to participate in and then we'll conclude um again with the um, the uh, summary of our uh, um our the main identification pointers of the warblers and uh, after the conclusion we'll open it for a uh, question and answer session yeah so um this presentation as i said this is going to be a two part presentation on warblers and uh, this presentation specifically covers only the brown warblers found in south india so the uh, all the other uh, species of warblers are slightly different in coloration so we are going to deal with that separately and uh, this is meant uh, for basically beginners to intermediate bird watchers and again uh, a highly simplified process but we'll try to in incorporate as many identification pointers uh, as possible and majority of the pictures used in this presentation are my own and uh, for a few species i didn't have uh, my own picture so i had to source it from the internet so the picture credits for those uh, images are given uh, right below the pictures themselves yeah so if you look at the warblers found in our region we have about um, 17 species of warblers in our region um namely the booted uh, the shikes blight street paddy field thick billed clamorous reed warbler broad tailed grassbird bristled grassbird um we have the lesser white throat orphean um eastern orphean warbler green warbler greenish warbler large billed leaf warbler um gray hooded warbler western crown warbler tickle leaf warbler and the palas uh grasshopper warbler so these are the uh, warblers found in our region uh, of which like uh, we are going to see the first eight uh, and we are going to reserve the rest of the uh, warblers for another day and the reason why we are going to um, and, and the, the way that we have uh, chosen the eight is based on their coloration uh, so most of the uh, species that we are trying to identify today are the overall colorish uh, coloration is brownish whereas the other warblers are like of a different coloration uh, for example the lesser white throat is like uh, uh, grayish gray and black greenish uh, green warbler is greenish gray hooded is like a combination of um, uh, gray and um, yellow tones um is the same for the western crown warbler as well the tickle leaf warbler is like largely uh, yellow and uh, uh, lemon color palas grasshopper warbler is also like a slightly different coloration unmistakable uh, really so the uh, we are only going to focus on the the first eight species that i mentioned here which i uh, call it as a brown warblers it's not a classification you will find on any of the books but this is something that i've just uh, come up with for the sake of identification so um let's see how we can identify the different uh, brown warblers we'll go species by species look at the critical identification pointers and then we'll try to arrive at um an um, identification uh, flow chart so if you look at the uh, warblers if you look at the size of the warblers um 
If the booted shikes, blightsreed, and the paddy field warbler are about 12 to 13 centimeters. So there are not much of a difference between them in the first four, uh, not much of a difference in terms of the size. So we'll call them the smaller brown warblers. And the rest four, namely the thick billed warbler, the clamorous reed warbler, the broad tailed grassbird, and the bristled grassbird. They are fairly large, almost like the double the size of the smaller brown warblers. So um, we'll call them the larger brown warblers. Uh, of course, like we'll be saying uh, each warbler um, with the help of some pictures and identification pointers, we're going to see one by one. But please keep this in mind. Size is like a very important identification pointer when it comes to warblers. So um, if you look at um, the things that we need to note both in the field, if you are looking at them in, um, with the help of a binoculars or if you're uh, taking pictures of a warbler, make sure um, that you make a note of all these points. The main thing is like the overall size of the warbler, the extent of the supercilium, uh, if there's any eye stripe um, in the warbler, uh, what is the uh, color of the bill, what is the length of the bill, what is the thickness, and uh, if there is if there's something uh, peculiar about the bill tip, that also need to be noted down. We need to look at the color of the legs and, um, and the tail, the outer tail and the tips. Uh, we need to make a note of when looking at the warblers. So uh, these are the um, six or seven points um, when it comes to warblers. So whenever you um, share pictures for identification on either online forums or even uh, Coimbatore Nature Society itself, a um, lot of people will want to look at multiple angles before they decide to see the uh, decide on the identification of the warblers. The reason is it's very difficult. Warblers, particularly as a group, are notoriously difficult to uh, identify because you need to consider a lot of different things in order to come to a conclusion and you will uh, very quickly see why all these different factors are required. So first is like uh, the most common abundant warbler that we come across is the booted warbler. So um, the booted warbler if you see um, the super slim the first point that you need to look at, um, the supercilium uh, extends beyond the eye and it is like square ended behind the eye. So this is something that you need to keep in mind. And um, usually it has like a short beak with a very pale lower mandible. It has like uh, pale legs and it has like paler outer tail feathers. So these are the uh, four different things that um, uh, you know, um, are very critical to note in a uh, booted warbler. The super cilium extends beyond the eye. The, uh, the bill is actually quite short in relation with the rest of the uh, uh, body. Um, and uh, it has like pale legs and the paler outer tail feathers. So uh, let's come to the next species, which is uh, the Shikes warbler. So the Shikes warbler, uh, again, I think um, um, is a relatively common species, but then a lot of people confused boot, uh, booted warbler with the Shikes warbler. But uh, the Shikes warbler differs from booted in the fact that it has like a, um, slightly longer beak when compared to the uh, booted warbler. Um, the super cilium again, uh, li like the booted, it extends beyond the eye. Um, it has like pale legs um, and it has like very shorter under tail coverts. Coverts in the sense thick feathers just below the tail. This is like, it's, it's quite short. Um, but whereas like if you look at the uh, the Blythe Warbler, which we are going to see next, it's going to be long. I'm, I'm, I'll share that picture very soon. And the other point when it comes to a booted and Shikes Warbler is that um, if you look at the 
the shape of the head, uh, the um, angle from the beak to the head, it, it looks quite steep. So this is something that we need to keep in mind. Other than the longer beak, it has a very steep forehead. I'll show the uh, booted uh, warbler again. Um, so if you look at the uh, beak and the head, the angle is like actually closer to probably around 70 degrees. Uh, sorry, um, it's probably around 120 degrees or so. If you look at the Sykes warbler, it's more like uh, 140 or 150 degrees. So it's actually quite um, a very angular uh, looking head uh, when compared to the booted warbler. So these are the main things that uh, we need to uh, keep in mind um, to differentiate booted and Sykes warbler. Um, so if you look at the Blight's Reed warbler, uh, which is the other um, more common warblers uh, you can find everywhere. Um, it typically, ha typically has like very olive looking upper parts. Um, it's not like very pure brown, it's more olive. Um, as some of the older individuals of Blight's Reed can also look olive, so we need to be a little careful. Um, so, and the other thing um, when it comes to the tail feathers, if you look at the, the tail feathers of the Blight's Reed Warbler look very dark. Whereas like if the Shikes, if you look at, it has like very pale outer tail feathers. The uh, Booted also has like very pale outer tail feathers. So the darker outer tail feathers, you'll see it in Blight's Reed Warbler. It has like a very uh, long beak, very angular head, uh, very similar to uh, Shikes' Warbler. But the supercilium doesn't extend beyond the eye, almost like abruptly ends uh, right at the eye. Uh, it doesn't extend beyond. And the color of the legs is also, if you look at the Shikes warbler, it has like very pale legs. Whereas uh, the uh, Blight's Reed warbler has like dark gray uh, colored legs. So from the Shikes warbler, um, the main differentiating pointers are the dark gray legs and the olive color upper parts and the darker outer tail feathers. So these are the main differentiating factors from the uh, Shikes' warbler. And the other uh, relatively um, uh, rarer uh, warbler in our area, but um, it can be confused with the other warblers, is the paddy field warbler. And there are a lot of uh, records from uh, Tirupur district for this warbler. In Coimbatore district, um, not very common, but then there are records. So the main thing is like, um, it has a very pronounced uh, dark eye stripe. If you can see, there's like very dark eye stripe. And it also has like dark sides to the crown. So above the supercilium, it, it's very dark and below the supercilium also, it is very dark. So these are very uh, important identification pointers for the uh, paddy field warbler. And uh, the tip of the beak is dark uh, um, with uh, respect to the paddy field warbler. And um, <clears throat> so it has like uh, yellowish or uh, pinkish brown legs. So, uh, these are like uh, some of the identification pointers for a paddy field warbler. Um, and the outer tail feathers are also dark uh, when compared to the, if you look at the tail, the outer tail feathers are also quite dark. So dark sides to the crown, dark eye stripe, dark tip to the bill and uh, dark outer tail feathers. It's also um, few of the uh, things that we need to keep in mind. So uh, we have covered like four smaller warblers. Now let's move on to the larger brown warblers. So uh, as we said, like there are four larger brown warblers. These are almost double the size of a um, 
the smaller brown warblers. Um, so um, size is a very important identification pointer. So for the first um, thing, uh, first um, uh, species that we look now is the thick-billed warbler. So thick-billed warbler, if you can see, uh, there's absolutely no supercilium. So this is like, um, you can be very sure that's the only warbler uh, which is found in South India, which doesn't exhibit any supercilium of any sort. Um, so, and it has like a very stout bill. There's no dark tip to the stout bill. Um, and there, and uh, sometimes it can show white tips to the tail. Um, so which can help uh, distinguish between the other larger uh, warblers. So, but the main thing to notice is it has like no supercilium. It has a very uh, thick stout bill without any dark tip. So the next uh, um, more common warbler is the clamorous reed warbler. Um, clamorous reed warbler, uh, again, is like a very large warbler, um, almost double the size of uh, uh, this thing, uh, the smaller warblers. So it, it shows a supercilium, but uh, it, it's only up to the eye, mostly. And then uh, it has like a very long bill. Um, there's no dark tip to the uh, bill. It has a very pink lower mandible. The upper parts are unmarked and are brown. Uh, so the only species what you can confuse the clamorous reed warbler is with the um, blight reed warbler. The habitat is also very similar. The blight reed and the clamorous reed both are seen in the same, very similar kind of habitat. Uh, but the blight reed warbler usually has like very olive color to the uh, uh, this thing. The upper parts, a clamorous reed has like very brown color uh, um, upper parts. So this is the main uh, thing. Uh, uh, identification pointer and of course like you can look at the other aspects also uh, for example it has uh, a pink lower mandible whereas like in the um, black street warbler it has like a very yellow looking uh, lower mandible so so these are the two uh, differentiating pointers so next is the broad-tailed grassbird. Broad-tailed grassbird is like very rare in our region. So mainly I think uh, you can see it uh, for the Coimbatore district, mainly you can see it in the Valparai area, particularly the Akamalai grasslands. Um, sometimes uh, people, we have reports from Yaravikulam National Park in Kerala and other parts, but then, um, it's like uh, at least in our area, it uh, remains like a high altitude species. We don't have many records from the plains, but uh, it's a very a unique looking warbler with a completely dark and a quite stout bill. Whereas the thick billed warbler and the thick billed warbler, the bill looks very pale. Um, the broad tailed grass bird has a very stout dark bill whitish underparts, unmarked upper parts. It has pale legs and the tail is very broad. As the name implies, it's a, it's a broad tailed grass bird. So it has like a very broad looking tail. Um, so this is the main uh, um, identifying po pointers for a broad tailed grass bird, the stout dark bill and the broad tail. So these are the two important things that we need to um, look at the uh, so uh, the next comes the bristled grass bird uh, which this bristled grass bird again we don't have uh, reports from Coimbatore there are a uh, few reports from Chennai it's a winter migrant um, around Chennai Kanchipuram that area um, we have reports uh, but anyway, for the sake of thoroughness, we have included that in our presentation as well. Um, so 
it has like a very stout dark bill and the main thing is like it has a, a strict upper parts so if you look at the um, if you look at it like it has like on the back there are a lot of streakings and it has quite a broad tail it has pale legs and a buffish or whitish under parts it has so and the super slim if you look at uh, there it can sometimes show a super slim but it's not very distinct and the same with the uh, broad tailed grass bird also if you look at uh, the super slim uh, you can say there is one but then it is not very distinct so the main thing is a stout dark bill in both the grass birds uh, one is completely unmarked the other is like uh, streaked upper parts so this is the the way that you distinguish both the uh, a species so in summary um, i have compiled the uh, list of all the uh, warblers the smaller uh, warblers and the, the um, bigger warblers so the boated warbler the main identification pointer it has this like it has the short bill um and then it has like a super slim is square ended beyond uh, beyond eye and uh, the leg color is pale the tail is like pale outer tail feathers shikes warbler the bill length is long and it has like a very pale leg and uh, it also has like pale outer tail feathers so the blight reed warbler the main thing is like uh, in comparison with the booted and the shikes warbler the main thing is like the leg color is dark gray and it has like dark outer tail feathers and of course like the upper parts are olive color so these three uh, things that we need to keep in mind um and super slim also is restricted only up to the eye and uh, whereas the booted and the shikes it extends beyond the eye so the paddy field warbler the main thing is like the, it has like a very dark eye stripe and uh, dark tip to the bill and um, dark outer tail feathers so these are the three things that we need to keep in mind for paddy field warbler so when it comes to the uh, four larger warblers uh, the thick billed warbler it has like a very stout bill and um, super slim is absent and the tail has like white tips it can be seen in flight um, not very often when it is perching uh, clamorous reed warbler has like a quite long beak slightly thicker bill and uh, dark gray legs and uh, the main thing that um, differentiates but a blight reed warbler is that the back is fairly plain it doesn't show any olive color as in the uh, blight reed warbler and uh, you know they even i think in the beak uh, the clamorous reed warbler shows uh, pinkish lower mandible whereas um, the blight reed warbler shows yellowish lower mandible so the broad tailed grass bird um, very dark stout bill and a broad tail the bristled grass bird again dark stout bill with uh, dark streakings on the upper part so it perhaps the only uh, warbler uh, that is seen in the south which has like dark streakings on the upper parts so um a tail is also quite broad but not as broad as the broad tail grass bird um so let's go into the identification flow chart so as with the previous uh, presentation i have also tried to summarize all the different identification pointers in a very simplified uh, manner i'll walk you through it um so first question that we need to ask when we uh, see a warbler in the field or uh, is is that whether it's a large warbler or a small warbler uh, if it is a large warbler does it have a super cilium um if the if it has like a very distinct super cilium then there's only large warbler which has a very distinct super cilium and that happens to be the clamorous reed warbler 
And the next question that we need to ask is, is the bill, uh, if, the, if it does not show a very distinct supercilium, uh, the next question we need to ask is, is the bill dark? Uh, if the answer is no, then uh, it has to be a thick build warbler because thick build warbler has a very pale bill. It does not have a supercilium and it has a very pale bill. So it has to be a thick build warbler. If the bill is not, uh, if the bill is dark, then there are two possible uh, warblers, the broad-tailed grassbird and the bristled grassbird. Then we we'll have to ask a follow-up question. Are the upper parts unmarked? If the quest answer is yes, um, then it has to be a, a broad-tailed grassbird if it is unmarked. And if it is marked, then it has to be a uh, bristled grassbird. So this is how you identify the larger brown warblers. When it comes to the smaller brown warblers, um, the first question that we need to ask is, does it have an eye stripe? If it doesn't show like very distinct eye stripe, then we can follow it up. But if it does show um, a distinct eye stripe, then the only a possible warbler in our area happens to be the paddy field warbler. If it doesn't have an eye stripe, then there are three possible warblers, the booted shikes and the blights. So we have to follow it up with two additional questions. Does it have a short bill? If the quest answer is yes, then we go to a, um, a booted warbler. If the answer is no, the bill looks fairly long. Um, we have to ask the question, supercilium, does it extend beyond the eye or it gets restricted to the eye? If it extends beyond the eye, it has to be a shikes warbler. If it extends, uh, if it ends right at the eye, it doesn't extend, then it has to be a blight's red warbler. Of course, there are other identification pointers also that you can use to confirm, like, for example, the olive color upper parts and things like that. But anyway, like for... For the sake of simplicity, um, we have sort of restricted to uh, two or three parameters that we need to look at uh, just for uh, making it easy for the beginners. So uh, people can take a screenshot of this um, flowchart if they prefer. Anyway, we'll be re revisiting this flowchart again um, during after the identification quiz is over. So let's proceed to the identification quiz. Okay, I think we are left with just five minutes on this call right now. Um, so I I think we can um, end this call now and then rejoin with the same credentials again. So we can proceed with the identification quiz. And um, if there are any questions up until this point, I'll be happy to take them. Any questions now? Uh, which of these, which of yeah. these are migrants and which of these are residents? Yeah, um, I think I was. Uh, have one second. Yeah. So if you look at uh, the warblers, the um, I think of the eight species, all that is marked in blue are migrants. The clamorous reed warbler and the broad-tailed grassbird happen to be. Uh, the residents, but clamorous reed warbler, the status is not very clear. Uh, I mean, uh, whether they are uh, residents in Coimbatore, whether they happen to be um, there, it is very clear that they are, uh, um, you know, nesting here in India. In fact, the name itself for the clamorous reed warbler, I think the, it has been uh, renamed to Indian reed warbler. So it's, it's, it's fairly clear that um, it's breeding in India whether it's a migrant or a resident in our area, I think we still need some more confirmation. Um, Broad-tailed grassbird is clearly a resident. It's an endemic species of the Western Ghats. So it is a resident. All the other species are migrants. So we can also use that as an identification marker in terms of 
at what time of the year we uh, spot these birds. Yeah, yeah, of course, uh, you can. Uh, one of the other things that I didn't mention here is that uh, we can also use the call as a very important identification mark um, because uh, I didn't give the call here. I, we only are using visual cues in our identification presentation, but then if everything else fails, then um, we can use calls to identify the warbler. Calls are quite unmistakable and they don't change. So uh, you can use calls as an identification. Uh, start with the identification quiz. So um, again, as, as we have divided the presentation into smaller brown warblers and the larger brown warblers, the identification quiz also will be split into two parts. The smaller brown warbler uh, quiz, where we'll be trying to identify the four smaller brown warblers and uh, again the larger brown warblers also um, four different species we'll try to identify all of them so coming to the small brown warblers so this is the first uh, species that we have for identification um, this would be the sykes uh, Shikes. Okay, any other opinions? And the reason why you feel it's a Shikes? Sorry, I didn't know uh, who answered that question. Not able to make. Now I'm not so sure. I feel it's olive in color also. <laughs> okay. So. Ma'am, as you said, uh, is this Harini, ma'am? Yeah, so, yeah, that's me. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, so um, you are right the first time. It is uh, Shaikh's Warbler. The reason why it's a shikes is because the supercilium extends beyond the eye and it has like pale legs, uh, whereas the uh, Blightsreed has uh, grayish legs and the outer tail feathers are also pale. Um, whereas like in the Blightsreed warbler, you will have like very dark outer tail feathers. So it uh, here the individual clearly shows the pale outer tail feathers. So, um, so it is like a Shikes warbler, uh, as you said. Congratulations. So I can't purely go by the coloring. As in, yeah, the, sometimes I like, you know, olive. yeah. So what happens is like, uh, sometimes when it is uh, under a foliage, sometimes uh, the um, green leaves overhead, they, um, give some kind of a color cast to the bird underneath. So right. you can use it as like a, one of the pointers, but yeah, so that is something that we need to be careful with coloring. Yeah, we'll proceed to the next interview. Yes. Yeah. Identify the warbler. No answers. Paddy field. Paddy field. Paddy field. Paddy field. Okay. Um, okay, sir. Uh, why do you think it's a paddy field warbler? Uh, pinkish legs. Pinkish legs, okay. Then, yeah. 
then uh, the black uh, stripe on the crown is that a no? the dark 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 sides to the crown dark sides to the crown okay so you feel it's a party filled war block okay sir sir actually in fact this is like a, a booted warbler and uh, the reason why it's a booted warbler is because um if you look at the tail the outer tail feathers are pale so uh, both the blight streed warbler and the um uh, and this thing um the paddy field warbler both have like very dark outer tail feathers and um, and actually if you look at the paddy field warbler the big tip will be very dark here you can very clearly see that it does not show very pronounced dark tip in fact the tip is quite pale here if you look at the tip of the bird and uh, there's no eye stripe in this bird um so it this is like a booted warbler so this is the reason why it's a booted warbler um yeah so can we proceed uh, with the next individual or should we uh, is it convincing okay so i'll proceed with the next uh, individual yeah so identify this warbler come on people is you know nobody is attempting this time now i know uh, warblers uh, require a lot of uh, information to process probably sikes again i don't know just take me shakes uh what do you think it's a shakes a uh, pale outer feathers supercilium uh, extending beyond the eye okay uh, not too sure about the bill okay uh, this individual uh, is like a paddy field warbler has a very dark uh, eye stripe and dark sides to the crown and it has like a very dark uh, tip to the beak also and the outer tail feathers are not really pale here uh, it might uh, look pale because of the rump um, over here but then if you look at the outer tail feathers it's quite dark um, this uh, this is like a paddy field warbler we don't see much in our region but then uh, we should be on the lookout for a paddy field warbler in our uh, areas also this is one more warbler to consider so next uh, smaller warbler i'll proceed to the next individual any opinions on this warbler
Is this a glamorous reed warbler, sir? You're close. Uh, These are smaller warblers. It's one of the smaller warblers. Yeah. There's only one warbler which looks very similar to the clamorous reed warbler, which is smaller in size. Blythe? Is it a Blythe then, sir? Blythe's reed? It is a Blythe's reed warbler. You can see that uh, it very clearly has like a very olive cast to the upper parts. The uh, legs are um, dark gray. The outer tail feathers are also uh, dark. The bill is like uh, long, it has a very angular head. And the supercilium ends right at the eye, it doesn't extend beyond. So all these uh, factors uh, point to the fact that it is a Blight's reed warbler. So, you um, know, uh, of course, like it's very difficult to um, make out the size by looking at the photograph. That's why I segregated uh, the quiz into two parts the smaller uh, reed warblers and then the larger reed, uh, reed warblers. I said it was a smaller reed warbler. So the only smaller reed uh, warbler with a combination of these fa um, features happens to be a Blythe's reed warbler. So let's uh, proceed to the, uh, the larger reed warblers, large brown uh, warblers, sorry. So the first, uh, um, individual for identification. Oops. If you remember the flow chart, you can go um, by the first question. Uh, does it show a distinct uh, supercilium? Any opinions? Clamorous reed warbler. Okay, it is a clamorous reed warbler because a clamorous reed warbler happens to be the only larger brown warblers found in our region which uh, exhibits a clear uh, supercilium. And uh, it has like, uh, the lower mandible shows, um, it has like a very long beak. The lower uh, mandible shows a lot of pinkish tones in it. Um, and uh, yeah, so all the identification pointers are very similar to the Blythe's reed warbler, but for the fact that uh, the clamorous reed warbler shows a lot of brown tones to the upper parts, whereas the Blythe's reed shows a lot of uh, olive tones. So it is like a clamorous reed warbler. Uh, so the next, uh, Warbler for identification. Again, remember it's a large. Um, Thick build warbler. Or any other opinions? Michal? So I'm confused between uh, the thick build or if it's a broad-tailed grass bird. So. But uh, what is the other feature about a uh, broad-tailed grass bird? The coloration of the bill, I think. Yeah. You're right. Actually, the uh, beak has very, the broad-tailed grass bird and the uh, bristled grass bird both have like very stout, dark bills. Whereas like this uh, bill is like quite pale. Um, so, but even before that, uh, the other thing is like it doesn't show any super silly at all. So that should uh, give away the fact that it is a thick build warbler. Should I proceed to the next uh, 
question next question yes sir yeah so identify this warbler this should be easy the bristled bristled one bristled grass bird rot <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kavya has given an answer. Uh, is it Kavya? Sorry. Yes. Okay, so it is a bristled grass bird because bristled grass bird happens to be the only uh, warbler which has like um, streaked uh, upper parts. You know, all the other warblers have very plain looking upper parts, and it has like um, very dark stout bill also it has quite a broad tail so all these factors uh, point to the fact that it is a bristled grass bird so identify this warbler broad tailed warbler yeah it's a broad tailed uh, um grass bird as you can see it has like a very broad tail uh, very a dark and stout bill, uh, not a very distinct supercilium, and uh, a very unmarked uh, upper parts as compared to the bristled grass bird. So a combination of all these pointers point to the fact that it is a broad-tailed grass bird. So I think we have come to the um, end of the identification quiz. So again, uh, just as a quick recap, so the main thing to note in the field when it comes to warblers is that we need to uh, note the overall size. It's a small warbler or large warbler. What is the extent of the supercilium? Um, the eye stripe, whether it's present. Uh, what is the color of the bill? the length, the thickness of the bill, and if there's any anything remarkable about the bill tip. What's the color of the legs? Uh, what? How does the tail look like? And uh, what are the uh, outer tail and uh, tips? How do they look like? So combination of all these things are very important in order to zero in on the identification of a warbler. Again, I'll show the um, summary of the identification pointers. Um, I'll not go through uh, each one, but maybe interested people can take a screenshot uh, of this um, eight brown warblers. Uh, so the first are four are the smaller brown warblers and the next four are the larger uh, brown warblers. So the main thing is to look for is the bill length, bill color, bill thickness, eye stripe, supercilium, uh, the color of the legs, sorry, color of the legs, the upper part and the tail. So uh, looking at these different aspects, we can zero in on the idea. So whatever I have like marked in bold are the very crucial identification uh, pointers for the uh, particular warbler species. So these three things it has to satisfy. Uh, of course, for confirmation, you have, you can look at the other aspects also in order to distinguish between uh, very similar looking species. Um, I'll proceed to the next slide. So again, I shared this flowchart earlier in the presentation. So uh, very. Um, uh, simply, like whether we, the first question we need to ask is whether it's a large warbler or a small warbler. If it is a large warbler, does it have a supercilium? Is the bill dark? Are the upper parts unmarked? So by asking these three quiz, uh, questions, uh, we can zero in on the identification of the species. And if it's a small warbler, does it have an eye stripe? Does it have a short bill? Uh, does the supercilium extend beyond the eye? So asking these three questions, we can uh, zero in on um, which species of warbler 
uh, smaller brown warbler it is. So um, thank you very much. I know it's a lot of information to process. In fact, uh, because there were about 18 species of warblers, I was uh, initially hesitating uh, how best to do it. Um, I tried to sort of compress it, um, make it as concise as possible. Um, it will take a little uh, longer time for all the information to be processed. We need to see a lot of individuals in the field and also go through a lot of photographs. And uh, we can participate in online forums like Ask ID of Indian Birds. Um, and, uh, you know, whenever some people post uh, pictures for identification, particularly warblers, we can sort of uh, follow the thread to find out how they sort of eliminate the other warblers and come to the conclusion it is like a particular warbler species. So, and I think we can also participate in a lot more identification discussions in the Coimbatore Nature Society group also. And uh, we can develop our identification skills uh, in a better way. So I hope uh, this was of some use to you. Um, again, thank you very much for a patient listening.